Welcome back to the channel guys, we've got a totally different video today. Sorry for the echoey noise, I've just uh, sort of picked that up now, though people have been saying it all day. Uh, the house is empty, so we've, we've brought a house uh, as an investment opportunity. Yeah, as a buy to let basically. Simply put, as the title states, I want to show you where I messed up, I don't want to swear, because of the, uh, well we're not getting paid by YouTube unfortunately, but just for future for future reasons yeah so i'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you jokes aside i want to show you where i messed up and cost myself i would say a lot of time a lot of effort and i could have cost myself thousands but my cousin came through as a cameraman behind as well and helped me out a hell of a lot uh so you know it saved me a lot of money ultimately but if you guys are looking to do something similar uh hopefully this video i'll try and keep it short will uh just uh, bring up some stupid mistakes that I made hopefully and also things that I did learn that you can take forward. So first things first guys, the, the little things add up, don't just think it's 50 quid, 40 quid, it adds up, it goes to hundreds, it goes to thousands. So the first thing I stupidly did not consider is, there was tenants in before or whether it was an owner in before, it was tenants in my case but in your case. You need to change your front door locks right, front and back. That cost me £65, people quoting 120 and so on. We got a good deal, £65, it's not too bad, but just bear in mind when you're adding stuff up, you need to change the lock, it's very important. Tenants can come back, maybe they, had, they were pissed off with the landlord, they might come back, smash the face up, you don't know. Worst case scenario, it's business and managing risk at the end of the day. I've just got some notes on the phone so I can keep it short and snappy for you guys. Number two, we've got blinds to show you here, we've got behind the blinds. You've got a handle. Now, let me tell you, handles are very important. That <laughs> sounds like a sale pitch, today. So we changed all the window handles because the previous owner gave us the locks for but To be honest, they didn't really work very well. And there was a few different locks for different ones. You need to check with your insurance, and this is something obviously I have done and I'm passing on to you. Make sure you do check with your insurance because a lot of them, if you make a claim, they require, they'll check stuff like with anything, car insurance, blah, blah, blah. They want to know that there is a certain lock on the on the door right, a certain type, and you've specified the right type. I paid £30 for 10 locks from Amazon. They've all got the same key, so we'll hand over the 10 lock. One key for all the windows, and the house is totally secure. We did want to show you guys along the way of the series. However, time is money, as they say, and I made a few mistakes as I'm going through here. And uh, we just had to fly through as quick as we couldn't get it out and stop recouping money. But it's ended up okay. So, in regards to this room and the next room, the tenants, so you can see up here this grey, my husband will show you this grey lining. And I'll stick a photo in over here also. There was this thick, stupid, not to my taste or most people's taste, coloured, what colour would you call it? Oh, I don't even know, brown? Some dark, weird brown colour, which actually was so hard to cover, like it took so much pain to cover it up you can come through now. Because uh, I'll just show you roughly how it was here as well. So there was a grey strip going across this living room, this whole wall. So right, I, so when I came in I thought, okay, one dick of white paint is white behind, but actually the grey from here to here, as you'll see on the photos, it took like seven coats. So think about the colours that, that are currently in the property, right, being used and really consider how much paint it's going to take you to sort it out or whether you're going to take wallpaper off or what not we'll get onto that after though um, and maybe add 20% because you know it always takes more back into this room another risk that I stupidly underwent was and it's all learning ultimately and you know thankfully it's turned out okay so guys just take note for you know you might not be as lucky basically as what passing on so the E I CR report, right, the electrical installation safety, whatever. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into legality and laws and all of this. Well, plenty of people do that. We don't want to cover the same stuff, the information out there. Make sure the current owner, the guy you're buying it off, or woman or whatever you're buying it off, uh, has got one done. For example, the issue we have here is, you can see these spotlights back here, my cousin will show you, right? What they do, right? So those lights there, were actually installed by a previous tenant and they also stuck in their own uh, basically I'll be able to show you some photos so you'll see on the side 
There's a socket there, fair enough, there is, it's covered up because the mutual socket is there. They just wired their own electrical, uh, what are they bloody called, sockets, man, uh, into the wall. And it didn't pass. Um, I got, again, here I got really lucky because the house wiring was fine overall. I mean, it could have needed redoing, uh, and that would have cost thousands of pounds. This wiring they put me, these you know, panels and stuff that they fitted themselves for the spotlights. You know, we could have ended up having to pull it all out and potentially replaster and stuff. So we got lucky, as I say. Um, but check the electrical certification. It's so important because when you let it out, I, I don't want to go into legality and stuff, but you need to get it done. And if it if it's not satisfactory, it can cost you thousands. Hopefully, in my case, it cost seventy quid to sort out. So I wasn't really bothered about that whatsoever. But it could cost you a lot. Okay, so another quick one, guys. The flooring I should have looked at closer here. A lot of the beading down here, as you can see, was actually missing. There was only one strip in the front room that we've done here, uh, and there was a lot missing in here. What I thought is in this living room. What I thought was okay. Well, I'll find something similar. You know, it's a cheap job. Ultimately, it, luckily, it was a cheap job. I couldn't find anything really the same. They are mostly similar, but to be honest, nothing was the same. Uh, and so I measured it up and I needed about 30 meters. I ended up having to buy, how much did we buy? 45 meters? 45, I believe, yeah. You know what I mean? So it ended up costing about 70 pounds. 70 pounds, again, not too bad. It's all adding up 65, 70, 70 pounds, things I didn't account for. And it's more so the time it took. So this is the point I'll get onto later on, guys. But a lot of the stuff, to be honest with you, man, you can do it yourself. If you're looking to invest in property and that kind of thing, you're gonna, it's best to learn a lot of these skills because you'll be using them quite often. So the building, we installed ourselves and it saved us quite a bit of money rather than paying someone. So another quick one, guys. This skirt, we had to put in. Uh, I say that like it's a major thing. But what I'm trying to get out of here is these are little, little things that we missed and they add up. They will cost you money buying the filler. Another thing here, right? I'm rambling on a bit on my boat. I just want to drill the point home and really get these things across. So here, we could have had an issue where we can't actually put, or we're really going to struggle to put a skirt, you know, it's going to end up looking weird. Because if you come closer, there's quite a gap between the wall and where the skirt will sit straight. And then they've taken out the, obviously, the fireplace and put in a piece of plasterboard. So you've just got a weird shape going around. And luckily, we managed to secure this on, well, bang on. That's this screw hidden there, you can't really see it. Uh, but it could have quite easily been the case where, my legs, where, you know, we couldn't really install it or it'd end up being a bit, like a bit here, a bit there. It just, ultimately, it leads to a rubbish finish and that is not what you want when you want to make the most out of your money. So moving on to the kitchen, again, I'll be sticking in photos here. Forgive me if they're not the best, again, we just want to get things going at the time. They had a carpet above these uh, tiles. Like an idiot, I didn't lift, lift up the carpet and check how the, the condition of the tiles. So again, once I've put money down, bought the property, spent thousands of pounds, I've then checked it like an idiot, as I say. Uh, so guys, don't do that, man. If you see a carpet in the kitchen, um, I mean, if people like it, they like it, it's fine. But most don't. And if you're looking to let it out, just as a side point, neutral colours we've gone for. You want to appeal to as many people as you can. And most like tiling in the, in the, in the uh, you know, Tiling or lino in the bathroom or the kitchen. So yeah, check stuff like that. Anything underneath, lift it. Don't be afraid to lift it, yeah? As I say, luckily we got, uh, well, yeah, we got lucky with this one. There's one or two cracked tiles, but it's, you know, this isn't uh, a million pound house. There's, there's, a little, there's a few issues here and there and whatnot. Again, the previous tenants installed um, spotlights here. Luckily, again, they passed. So no issues We'll put these are examples of the door handles that were stuck in. There was some weird plastic piece that they stuck here. We pulled that out, covered that, extended that a little bit. These are minor odd jobs, right? Uh, replace this door handle because for some, well, I actually got stuck in this house and had to go through the next door neighbours one day on my own. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they are odd jobs that add up. All of this stuff costs, it costs time. If you can't do it, Really, you need to learn how to do it, to be honest. Um, 
if you can't do it, you have to pay someone and they're going to charge you a lot. Yeah, so again, I'll add some photos. But there was a cabinet here, for example, full of mold. These extractor fans, thankfully, they do work. There's one in the bathroom, too. Come through on that. I'll show you. Uh, they were covered up. I don't know, maybe they felt cold or something, but listen, <laughs> that's extractor fans are there for a reason. So, this place is, there's quite a bit of mold still here. So, that's obviously something we're going to try and sort out before anyone moves in. I mean, you guys know what mold looks like, but it's not, it's not the worst, but you know what, this is probably the worst issue there is in the house. And there's a hole down there that we filled in. Uh, that my sister subsequently kicked and needs sort of refilling and sanding. But my point, as it has been from the start of this video, is odds and suds add up and you need to just check everything. So, on to the garden. So, it's quite late, guys, so I'll try not to be too loud. But, guys, the garden and actually the house, largely. Well, I'll come back to that actually. But the garden was full of shit basically. So there was a lot of stuff piled up. Um, just random crap. Including a car tyre. Which is hard to dispose of to be honest. And also to know. These need a bit of a clean yet. But all of these copers. I don't know how well you can see them. You see them alright? You can see them pretty well yeah. Yeah. They like. What would you say 90% of them? Yeah a lot of them. 90% of them were totally loose. The thing is if that falls on someone it can kill them. So as a landlord. Uh, safety of your tenants is a is the main priority as much as we want to make money and stuff if someone gets hurt it's just I mean so money, head, as, money aside it's just you know you don't want that new conscience either you know what I mean so we had to buy 45 kilos 50 kilos of mortar yeah mix it so these are things you've got to learn again you know bits and bobs to save yourself money otherwise I mean I think we would have been quoted about 200 odd pound so we did it for about 60 yeah between us and we uh, remortared all of these copers. And to be honest, that's largely the garden done. This gutter needed extending. Again, bits and bobs. Yeah, I don't think you'll see up there, but the gutter is slightly misaligned. You probably won't see it. Well, you can take my word for it. So, again, that's something you're gonna, you know, these things check. Check them. It doesn't matter if the landlord's getting fussy, the current one or the owner, because you're taking too long check in and hurry up. Listen, in most cases, you're making a six figure decision. Take your time, you get me? That's my advice. Don't leave any stone unturned, it? That's the one. So, moving on upstairs, guys. Another one to know the te previous tenants. I'd put their own carpets in. Now me being a naive, dumb 23 year old, I thought, great, free carpets. In decent condition and they're not in the worst condition. But once I brought it upon closer inspection, they, were, they weren't too bad at all. Uh, there's a few odd stains and whatever that you get anyway. It's not a brand new property, so that's fine. But more so, as we'll show you, um, the, the way they cut them, they'd over cut them with, in the end, worked out okay. But well, just be careful of it, right? Just don't never make these stupid mistakes that I made, basically. So they've oversized them and they're hanging up slightly over the skirt. You'll see in photos, hopefully. Now I thought, okay, worst case scenario, instead of paying a couple grand to get new carpets in, because I'm not budgeted for that like an idiot, uh, I'll just get someone to refit them. Bought the house and so on, and then realised, contacted people, hey, we don't refit carpets that, you know, we don't do that, we supply and fit them. So no one fits them, uh, like for the most part, refits a carpet that's already there. So now I'm stuck with carpets that look completely stupid and don't fit, you know. But as I say, luckily me and my cousin, we managed to sort it out. Uh, we managed to tuck them in and cut them pretty well, to be honest. Uh, so you can come through. So the other thing is there was a bit of damp in the house, which again, wasn't properly checked. Uh, the roof up here, very old. Any wallpaper like this is a bad sign, really. And it's to keep a uh, bad wall together. So bear that in mind. Yeah, so the roof basically, in a few places, the paint would peel off as you're trying to paint over it. So here, this is probably the worst roof in the house, would you say, in terms of painting? Yeah, probably. But it's bearable. It's not, it's not as I say, we're not charging extortion amount of rent. 
and you know you don't really see it too much and it's covered for the most part but it was an absolute nightmare because as you can imagine i'm not that tall i'm like 5'10 but with a double stick with a paint rod you still can't reach that top corner so you need like a proper paint platform and whatever you know a ladder type thing so again just think practically how are you going to do things you're probably going to have to buy equipment if you haven't got it already so bear that in mind Here, my cousin has done a great job. You can tell if you can tell, obviously, but um, you wouldn't notice if you didn't look. But you wouldn't realize we've stuck. We've had to extend the door basically. So again, I'll stick a photo in. Strangely, well, I mean, I understand why they did it, but it's just a weird way of going about it. They put a wooden plank here, about an inch or so thick, three centimeters, two or two or three centimeters. It was in it. I'm just mm -hmm. going up memory now. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a trip hazard, number one. So we have to get rid of that. And then pull the door off, stick wood on, buy the wood, stick the wood, sand it down, so on and so forth. Again, all costs. So just check these things, man, is all I'm saying, really. So a couple of things in this room, guys. My cousin did an amazing job, right? Now, bear in mind, we are not DIY experts or contractors. We've never done a day of work in our life. No, I'm joking. We've done bits and bobs as well. Pretty, would you say pretty much most things besides painting that we did here are new yeah was the first time we did it. yeah yeah so and we worked quite well as a team so there was a crack along this roof literally like the whole way right we got a bit of advice from our uncle so shout out our uncle he knows who he is if you're watching this in terms of how to deal with most of these tasks and then we executed them with perfection ourselves maybe not perfection but we tried to uh, so we can't open the crack for crack further Take that as you will. And I filled it in. Take that as you will again. And my cousins nicely sanded it down and we painted over it. Uh, you can find good uh, videos online. There's loads in terms of how to deal with cracks and stuff. You, want, you put a slit in either, either side, sorry, to uh, stop it from continuing. But again, time, money, paint, filler, tools. A uh, point that we'll come on to later on that my cousin uh, mentioned in terms of what we've learned. You need the right tools for the job. You can do things, you know, with your hands well and whatever, but that's not like it. We spent, uh, what would you say, hours, potentially hours on this stupid door piece. Yeah. With a <laughs> hand sanding it. it. Hand sanding it. Turns out, in the family, we have access to a uh, mouse sander, which is yeah. automated and makes things a lot quicker and would have made that a half an hour job. And also, they're not expensive to buy, so if you need to buy one, buy one. Uh, point being, get the right tools account for the tools beforehand it's going to save you a lot of time and save you a lot of money also guys so these chimneys in regards to the chimneys i'll show you the room shortly they were papered over how many times maybe like three or four three times three or four times yeah and the surface was so uneven we wanted a, a pretty nice finish on the house overall so you know we decided to strip it down paper it and paint it again i didn't account for that when i bought the house and it costs money to buy the paper, to buy the paint, time. I think you spent hours wiping down the wall trying to get every last bit of paper off it. You know, so it's just just check these things, guys. Check these things through and through. Bit of a bonus room here. So this room here was a bit of a write-off, believe it or not. And it looked terrible. I think it hadn't been touched in about 15 years, maybe. Uh, and I decided to paper it with the paper we had left spare. Um, which covers up, to be honest with you, some of the blemishes in the wall behind it. But it's not really going to be used that much in terms of, well, no one's going to be hitting these walls. It's more, it's more above anyway, to be honest. But and then grey, we went with grey here. Obviously, the theme around this house is grey and white. Uh, I thought about going white to make the small room look a bit bigger, but actually, it's, the walls are not amazing. It's fine to be honest, but it's just not like brand new. So I thought grey. Oh, you can't see the odd sort of bits here and there with this also loft access do you want to zoom up to that so that's a lock we put in yeah very hard to do that no, i'm joking what we decided to do with any spare stuff like the beading maybe we've got 15 meters of spare beading now you're not going to be able to bead another house with that and it's specifically for this house really it's not going to be used anywhere else if anything is damaged by tenants um I've just left that in the loft and I've locked the loft and the loft is out of access or out of bounds for any tenants because it's not safe to stand in there 
which is totally reasonable. So there's a lock on there, a padlock, and I've got the key, and no one else needs a key for that. So any spare, so there's a bit of spare grey paint, for example, not enough to paint again three or four walls in another house. It will just be touch-ups in this house when other tenants go because it's difficult to find the same paint colour. Covered up, bagged up, put under stuff away in the loft when the tenants leave. If anything needs a, needs a touch up, we've got a decent amount of paint to touch stuff up and not spend money again. Ultimately, it's a business, so you know you got to think in a business sense. So coming through to the second room, which is basically the middle room, I should have spotted a damp little stain there. Um, and when you do go around the house, when you're looking to purchase your house, look around the radiators. A stain like that indicates a leak. And again, I didn't do that. And I wasn't informed of it. Uh, perhaps the previous owner did not. So uh, the tenants certainly didn't tell anyone. Uh, that could have been a major issue. Thankfully, yeah, it's bone dry. It's been fixed. Um, things like this, it shouldn't cost you too much, but it can be very fiddly. And to be honest with you, this is something I didn't personally want to touch. Even though I'm trying to learn, I'd rather someone else do that and I'll learn while I watch them because this could go very wrong. Uh, you could end up with a lot of water all over the place and then how do you get it out? So check for leaks. So again in regards to the paint guys, they had a big ass grey square here, which we'll show you. Um, I mean weird for one, but each to their own. Consider how much paint, I should have considered how much paint, such a dark colour is going to take to go over. Do you know what I mean? Something I didn't do. And then just look closely at the wall as well. I'll be honest, I'm still a bit bamboozled, is that a word? I'm still a bit bamboozled by what the hell this strip is. Like, what is that strip, man? I just don't quite get what's going on. Uh, and it, it, it dampens the finish on the room and you get people asking what's going on and you just don't want that, to be honest. So look closely is what I'm saying here. Look closely. It's ended up okay for us, but um, but do look closely. Do look closely. There's a bit of damp here again, which I can see. So we're gonna go into damp a bit here and move into the small room. So we did again like a dumbass. I didn't really look closely, or like it was an untrained eye perhaps. There was damp up there. It's been covered in a special. It's no damp or whatever. If you guys want to know, comment below and I'll send you a link to it. It's on Amazon. Um, also, this wall there was damp behind it, so we had to buy quite an expensive tub. I think it was like twenty pound. Twenty pound for the tin. Yeah, it's twenty pound for the tin. Shout out to my friend for the recommendation. Uh, twenty pound a tin, and it was like a five liter tin, so it just about covered really what we wanted. But it's worked, so we're happy with that. So check for damp. Very important. Could, I mean it could indicate there's a hole in the roof or you know serious stuff so all these things need to be thoroughly checked and noted so in conclusion guys a couple of things I'd say is just because it's currently tenanted because when I first visited it it was tenanted don't think that all right it's tenanted uh, when they leave I can stick someone straight and there's no work to do that's probably the number one stupid mistake I made when they take all their stuff down their photos and this and they're that there's holes, there's paint missing, there's all sorts, it's not... But actually, if I think back, the first thing I remember thinking is... Okay, this is a bit different, and I really should have uh, probably voiced my sort of thoughts then, but I didn't. On that note, naively, when I bought this house, it was actually full of stuff that the tenants left. And now I would have been well within my right to turn around to the owner and say, listen, it's full of shit. That it's your responsibility legally to empty the house. Instead, I spent probably a full day, you said, full day? Probably even more than a day. More than a day, a day and a half, six, seven trips to the dump, borrowed a car and loaded it and dismantled it. None of that, I shouldn't have done any of that legally. You know, naively I did, but in future, in the future and for yourself, you've agreed to buy the house, not the shit that's in it. So it's not your job to clean it. That time, that time cost me money. And obviously my cousin helped me out, uh, but it also would have cost me a lot longer is my point if I didn't have him. Maybe someone else might be doing it on their own, like yourself for example. So that's another point to know. Okay, also mentioned before, 
power tools and that kind of stuff. Maybe don't go overboard because you want to stay safe. But stuff like electric, what are they called? Sanders. Sanders, a mouse sander, or whatever it's called. Drills. Drills, you know, mini ones, screwdriver type drills, whatever they're called. I don't know what they're called, but they save you so much time. Like, just invest. You can probably, if we put a hundred pound into all of this house, we would have saved absolutely hours. Yeah. Which in the end we managed to borrow them and stuff, so it was all right. But that investment at the start will save you a lot of time. So look and assess what you're buying and consider the equipment that would speed it up. I'm not saying go and spend a grand on something, but reasonably, you know, I would say a hundred pound worth of equipment would have saved us like a day's worth of it, more than a day's worth of it, man. Maybe like a couple of days, and then we've still got the equipment for the next house and so on, do you know what I mean? Alright, so the the final few things I would say that we did well here was neutral colours. We attracted so many tenants in it. I didn't even, I mean, I've not formally listed the property and I've had probably 15 viewings so far. Uh, just sticking a photo, or a couple of photos that I took on my own phone on Facebook. I've paid for professional, a professional photographer to take photos. And uh, I've not even used them yet, so to be honest, if you have a good finish, neutral colours, uh, white, light grey, these kind of things, at the moment, that's what's in any way, people like the clean look, and you're going to attract the majority of people, whereas if you go for some kind of weird, quirky thing or whatever, you know, most people might not be interested. And a lot of them also want a blank canvas, i.e. white, so they can do their own thing. Obviously, you'll agree with them in terms of how it's left and whatever and whatnot. Uh, and the other thing, the final thing I would say, after, you know, not putting anything down up so far, everything's very important. Um, learn as much as you can. So initially, I planned on paying people, paying, paying for the wall, paying for uh, the roof crap, paying for the carpets, £100, £200, £300 here. You know what? Who do we really pay for this whole house? We paid for the locks to get changed, £65, okay, we can't do that. What else did we pay? I don't think we paid anything. I don't think, yeah. I don't think we paid anything. Because understand. you know what, contractors, I've also found, you can't rely on them. The carpet guy was supposed to come, he didn't come, he failed like twice. You know, these things, and the, the longer you're waiting for them, the more money you're paying bills, council tax and so on, a mortgage, if there's a mortgage. You know, you're losing out on money and it's business at the end of the day and time is literally money, to be honest with you. Uh, it works out that way anyway. So learn as much as you can, as many of these skills, and you can move forward with them with your next property and so on. And with that, guys, I hope it's been a useful video. Um, it's completely different, obviously, to what I usually do. Uh, but I've always said it is an infotainment channel. So uh, along with the mukbangs and entertainment or whatever, I do want to bring you as much benefit as I can. And as I learn things throughout life, I'll try and pass them on to you as best as I can, really. And these are things I wish someone told me. There you go. Uh, if you like the video, guys, hit the like button, comment down below. Any questions you've got, any criticism, you call me an idiot because I did make a lot of mistakes. If you want, I'll give you that. Uh, share the video to anyone you think might benefit and hit the subscribe button. And if there's any, if you guys want to run through like finances and the finance of this house and how I've done it, and because there's a lot of money involved besides doing it up. Marketing, potentially a mortgage, bills, the rental, you know, the rental value, uh, finding people, you know, all of this stuff. It's something we can probably talk about as well if you want. But I don't want to blabber on about money because one, people are a bit funny about that sometimes, and two, I feel like most people have probably covered a lot of it. But I can tell you my experience and treat this house as a subject for you if you want, if you think that would be good. So that's one of my suggestions. If you guys want to see it, comment down below. If you want to see anything else, comment down below. Hit the, pardon me, hit the like button. It's been a long day to share, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Also, one last thing, hit up my Instagram. So, just for the clout, yeah, one for the clout. <laughs> no, I'm joking, but, um, so as I say, we didn't manage to document uh, in terms of YouTube video format what we've done with the house but I've got weeks and weeks worth of story snaps that you can flick through on the highlights it's called I think on Instagram yeah. you, and you'll see a lot of what I'm talking about because I snapped uh, or I snapped snap is it whatever the term is these days yeah I took images of it and, and put it on the highlights and there's loads of progression so we spent a total of 22 days here 
because I put like day number one, day number two, and what we're doing and whatnot. So yeah, man, hit up the Instagram. It's O M A R I N I T Y T. I'll be linked below as well, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Make sure you subscribe.